Good afternoon, everyone. Last Sunday of this year has brought us about midway to the great epic Paradise Lost. It was though a very hard year for all of us due to this pandemic. Still, you all made it a wonderful year for Test Reading Club. A small initiative taken in June 2021 received a lot of love and support from you all. A lot of new members. have become a part of this wonderful club and their enthusiasm and support is above par we students have learned a lot and it seems we have known a few authors personally by now all credit for this wonderful work goes to a wonderful teacher dr kalyani vallad who keeps on inspiring us and motivates us to keep on reading of course our, pa our participants also deserve credit who spare their precious time every week to participate and above all our youtube friends who listen to us despite the fact we have network issues sometimes so on this last sunday of the year test reading club wishes you all a very very happy new year full of reading learning and joy without much ado let's start now book 5 and eat that is the tone that begins book 5 satan and whispers have brought eve disturbing dreams satan himself is absent from this book in a direct way as he is from the next three although his actions have set everything in motion and the talk is of no one but him there is no doubt who is dominating the narrative adam and eve pray and god sends the angel raphael to warn them of the danger lurking nearby and to make sure by telling them clearly that they won't be able to plead ignorance later on again something in milton leads him to show a pretty and legalistic side of god the father which is quite different from his view of the son when raphael is welcomed by adam and eve there is a curious passage of what i can only call gastro theology milton becomes unnecessarily literal about whether angels can eat and if so what and what happens to the food once eaten that's the sort of thing that happens when a storyteller takes his eye off the impulse of the story for a short while the rest of the book is raphael's account of the origins of the war in heaven of how god's announcement that he had begotten the son provoked the envy of satan and some other angels and of how they withdrew to the north and plot their rebellion and of how one faithless faithful only he defied them and set off back to the armies of god morning approach eve relates to adam her tub troublesome dream he likes it not yet comforts her they come forth to the daily day labor their morning hymn at the door of their bar God to render man inexcusable since he failed to admonish him of his obedience and of the estate of his enemy near at hand who he is and why his enemy and whatever else may avail Adam Adam to know the fail comes down to paradise his appearance described his coming discerned by Adam afar off sitting at the door of his bower he goes out to meet him brings him to his lodge entertains him with the choicest fruits of paradise got together by eve their discourse at table raphael performs his message minds adam of his state and of his enemy relates at adam's request who that enemy is and how he came to be so beginning from the first revolt in heaven and the occasion thereof he how he drew his legions after him to the parts of the north and there incited them to rebel with him persuading all but only abdiel etcra who in argument dissuades and opposes opposes him then forsakes him now morn her rosy steps in the eastern clime advancing sowed the earth with orient pearl when adam waked so customed for his sleep was airy light from pure digestion bread and temperate vapors bland which the only sound of leaves and fuming rills aurora's fan lightly dispersed and the shrill matin songs of birds on every bough so much the more his wonder was to find an awakened eve with tresses discomposed and glowing cheek 
as through unquiet rest, he on his side, leaning half raised with looks of cordial love, hung over her enamored and beheld beauty, which whether waking or asleep, shot forth peculiar graces, then with voice mild, as then Zephyrus on Flora breathes. Her hand, soft touching, whispered thus, Awake, my fairest, my exposed, my latest found, heaven's last best gift, my ever new delight. Awake, the morning shines, and the fresh field calls us. We lose the prime to mark how spring our tended plants, how blows the citron grove, what drops the mare, and what the balmy reed. How nature paints her colors, how the bee sits on the bloom, extracting liquid sweet. Such whispering waked her, but with startled eye on Adam, whom embracing, thus she spake. O soul in whom my thoughts find all repose, my glory, my perfection, glad I see thy face, and mourn returned. For I this night, such night, till this I never passed, have dreamt. If dreamt, not as I often am wont of the works of day past or morrow's next design, but of offense and trouble, which my mind never knew never till this irksome night met thought close at mine ear when called me forth to walk with gentle voice. I thought it thine, it said, Why sleepest thou, Eve? Now is the pleasant time, the cool, the silent save where the silence yields to the night warbling bird that now awake tunes sweetest his love labored song now reigns full of the moon and with more pleasing light shadowy sets off the face of things in vain if none regard heaven wakes with all his eyes whom to behold but the nature's desire in whose sight all things joy with ravishment, attracted by thy beauty, still to gaze. I rose as at all at thy call, but found thee not. To find thee, I directed then my walk, and on my thought alone I passed through ways that brought me on a sudden to the tree of interdicted knowledge, fair it seemed. Much fairer to my fancy than my day. And as I wondering looked, beside it stood, one shaped and winged like of those from heaven, by us oft seen, his dewy locks distilled ambrosia. On that tree he also gazed. And O oh, fair plant, said he, with fruit surcharged, deigns none to ease thy load and taste thy sweet, nor God nor man is knowledge so despised, or envy what reserve forbids to taste, forbid who will, none shall from me withhold longer thy offered good, why else set here? This said he paused not, but with venturous arm he plucked, he tasted, me damp horror chilled, at such bold words, vouched with a deed so bold. But he thus overjoyed, O fruit divine, sweet of thyself, but much more sweet thus cropped, forbidden here, it seems, as only fit for gods, yet able to make gods of men. And why not gods of men? Since good, the more communicated, more abundant grows, the author not impaired, but honored more. Here, happy creature, fair angelic Eve, partake thou also, happy though, happy though thou art, happier thou mayest be, worthier canst not be, taste this, and be henceforth among the gods, thyself a goddess, not to earth confined, but sometimes in the air, as we sometimes ascend to heaven by merit thine, and see what light the gods live there, and such live thou. So saying, he drew nigh, and to me held, even to my mouth of that same fruit held part, which he had plugged, and the pleasant savory smell so quickened appetite, that I, methought, could not but taste. Forthwith, up to the clouds with him I flew, and underneath beheld the earth outstretched immense, a prospect wide, and various wondering at my flight and change. 
to this high exaltation suddenly my guide was gone and i me thought sunk down and fell asleep but oh how glad i waked to find this but a dream thus eve her night related and thus adam answered sad best image of myself and dearer half the trouble of thy thoughts this night and sleep affect me equally nor can i like this uncouth dream of evil sprung i fear yet evil wants in thee can harbor none created pure but know that in the soul are many lesser faculties that serve reason as she among these fancy next her half is holes of all external things which the five watchful senses represent she forms imaginations airy shapes which reason joining or disjoining frames all what we affirm or what deny and call our knowledge or opinions then retires into her private cell where nature rests oft in her absence mimic fancy ways to imitate her but misjoining shapes wild work produces oft and most in dreams ill matching words and deeds long past or late some such resemblance me think i find of our last evening talk in this thy dream but with addition strange yet be not sad evil into the mind of god or man may come and go so unapproved and leave no spot or blame behind which gives me hope that what in sleep thou didst abhor to dream waking thou never wilt consent to do be not disheartened then nor cloud those looks that want to be more cheerful and serene than when we fair morning for smiles on the world and let us to a fresh employment right among the groves the fountains and the flowers that open now the choicest bosom smells reserved from night and kept for thee in store so cheered he his fair spouse and she was cheered but silently a gentle tear let fall from either eye and wiped them with a hair two other precious tops that ready stood each in the crystal sluice he ere they fell kissed as the gracious sign of sweet remorse and pious awe that fear to have offended so all was clear and to the field they haste but first from under shady arbors who soon as they forth were come to open sight of day spring and the sun who scarce uprising with wheels yet hovering over the ocean brim shot parallel to the earth his dewy ray discovering in wide landscape all the east of paradise and eden's happy plains lovely they bowed adoring and began their orisons each morning duly paid in various style for neither various style nor holy rapture wanted they to praise their maker in fit strains pronounced or sung unmeditated such prompt eloquence flowed from their lips in prose or numerous verse more tunable than needed lute or harp to add more sweetness and they thus began these are thy glorious works parent of good almighty thine this universal fame thus wondrous fair thyself how wondrous then unspeakable who sits above these heavens to us invisible or dimly seen in these thy lowest works these yet these declare thy goodness beyond thought and power divine speak ye who best can tell ye sons of light angels for ye behold him and with songs and choral symphonies day without night circle his throne rejoicing ye in heaven on earth join all ye creatures to extol him first him last he meets and without end fairest of stars last in the train of night if better thou belong not to the down sure pledge of day that crowns the smiling morn with thy bright circle praise him in thy sphere while day arises that sweet hour of prime thou son of this great world both eye and soul acknowledge him thy greater sound his praise in thy eternal course both when thou climbest and when high noon highest hast gained and when thou fallest moon that now meetest the ori orient sun now flyest with the fixed stars fixed in their orb that flies and ye five other wandering fires that move in mystic dance not without song 
resound his praise, who out of darkness called up light. Air and ye elements, the eldest birth of nature's womb, that in quarantine run perpetual circle, multiform and mix and nourish all things. Yet your ceaseless change vary to our great maker still you praise. Ye mists and exaltation that now rise from hill or steaming lake, dusky or gray, till the sun paints your fleecy skirts with gold in honor to the world's great author rise. Whether to deck with clouds the uncolored sky or wet the thirsty earth with falling sh showers, rising or falling still advance his praise. His praise ye winds that form from our four quarters blow. Breathe soft or loud or wave your tops. Ye pines with every plant in sigh of worship wave. Fountains and ye that warble as ye flow. Melodious murmurs, warbling tune in praise. Join voices, all ye living souls, ye birds that singing up to heaven gate extend. Bear on your wings and in your notes his praise. Ye that in waters glide, and ye that walk the earth, and stately tread or lowly creep, witness if I be silent, mourn or even, to hill or valley, fountain or fresh shade, made vocal by my song and taught his praise. Hail universal Lord, be bounteous still to give us only good. And if the night have gathered out of evil or concealed, disperse it as now light dispels the dark. So prayed the innocent and to their thoughts, firm peace recovered soon and wanted calm. On to their morning's rural work, they haste among sweet dews and flowers, where any row of fruit trees over woody reached too far, their pampered bows and kneaded hands to check fruitless embraces, or they let the vine to wed her em. She spoused about him twines, her marriageable arms, and with her brings her dover the adopted clusters to adorn his barren leaves. Them thus employed beheld with pity heaven's high king, and to him called Raphael, the sociable spirit that deigned to travel with Tobias and secured his marriage with the seven times wedded maid. Raphael, said he, thou hearest what stood on earth, satin from hell, scaped through the darksome gulf, hath raised in paradise, and how disturbed this night the human pair, how he designs in them at once to ruin all mankind. Go therefore, Half this day as friend with friend, converse with Adam in what bower or shade thou findest him from the heat of noon retired to respite his day labor with repast. Or with repose and such discourse bring on as may advise him of his happy state, happiness in his power left free to will, left to his own free will, his will though free, yet mutable, Whence warm, warn him to beware, he swerve not too secure, tell him with thill his danger, and from whom what enemy, late fallen himself from heaven, is plotting now. The fall of others from like state of bliss, by violence, no, for that shall be withstood. But by deceit and lies, this let him know, lest full, willfully transgressing he pretend, surprisal and admonished unforewarned. So spake the eternal father and fulfilled all justice, nor delayed the winged saint after his charge received. But from among thousand celestial ardors where he stood, veiled with gorgeous wings, upspringing light flew through the midst of heaven, the angelic choirs on each hand parting. His speed gave way through all the imperial road till at the gate of heaven arrived. The gate self opened wide on golden hinges turning as by work divine the sovereign architect had framed. From hence no cloud or to obstruct his sight, star interposed, however small he sees, not unconfirmed to other shining globes, earth and the garden of God with Siddhar's crowned, 
above all hills, as when by night the glass of Galileo, less assured, observes, imagine lands and regions in the moon, or pilot from amidst the Cyclades, Delos or Samus, first appearing Kents, a cloudy spot. Down the third prawn in flight he speeds, and through the vast ethereal sky, sails between worlds and worlds with steady wing. Now on the polar winds, then with quick fan, winnows the buxom air, till within soar of towering eagles, to all the foals he seem, a phoenix gazed by all, as that soul bird went to enshrine his relics in the sun's bright temple to Egyptian. Thebes he flies, at once on the eastern cliff of paradise he lights, and to his proper shape returns, a seraph winged, six wings he wore, to shade his lineaments divine, the pair that clad, each shoulder broad, came mantling o'er his breast, with regal ornament, the middle pair. Girt like a starry zone his waist, and round skirted his loins and thighs with downy gold and colors dipped in heaven. The third his feet shadowed from either heel with feathered male sky tinctured grain. Like Maya's son he stood and shook his plumes that heavenly fragrance filled the circuit wide. Straight knew him all the bands of angels under watch and to his state and to his message high in honor rise. For on some message high, they guessed him bound. Their glittering tents he passed, and now is come into the blissful field through grooves of mar and flowering odors, cassia, nard, and the balm. A wilderness of sweets, for nature here wantoned as in her prime, and played at will her virgin fancies, powering forth more sweet, wild above rule or art, enormous bliss. Him through the spicy forest on would come, Adam discerned, as in the door he sat of his cool bower, while now the mounted sun shot down direct his fervid rays to, form, to warm earth's inmost womb, more warmth than Adam needs, and Eve within. Dew at her art prepared for dinner savory fruits of taste to please, true appetite and not disrelish thirst of nectarous draughts between, from milky stream, berry or grape, to whom thus Adam called, haste hit her eve, and word thy sight behold, eastward among those trees, what glorious shape comes this way moving, seems another moon, risen on mid-noon, some great behest from heaven, to us perhaps he brings, and will vouchsafe this day to be our guest, but go with speed, and what thy stores contain, bring forth and pour abundance, fit to honor and receive our heavenly stranger. Well, we may afford our givers their own gifts, and large bestow from large bestowed, where nature multiplies her fertile growth, and by disburdening growth more fruitful, which instructs us not to spare. To whom does Eve, Adam, earth's hollowed mole, of God inspired, small stores will serve, where store all seasons, ripe for use hangs on the stock, save what by frugal storing firmness gains to nourish, and superfluous moist consumes. But I will haste, and from each bow and break, each plant in juiciest God will pluck such choice to entertain our angel guest, as he beholding shall confess that here on earth God hath dispensed his bounties as in heaven. So saying, with dispatchful, dispatchful looks in haste, she turns on hospitable thoughts intent. What choice to choose for delicacy best? What order? So contrived as not to mix tastes, not well joined, inelegant, but bring taste after taste upheld with kindliest change, bestows her then. And from each tender stock, whatever earth all-bearing mother yields, in India, east or west, or middle shore in Pontus or the Punic coast, or where Alcinous reigned, 
fruits of all kind in coat rough or smooth rind or bearded husk or shell she gathers tribute large and on the board heaps with unsparing hands for drink the grape she crushes inoffensive must and meads from many a berry and form and from sweet kernels pressed she tempers dulcet creams nor these to hold wants her fit vessel pure then strews the ground with rose and odors from the shrub unfumed meanwhile a primitive great sire to meet this god is the god like gaze works forth without more drink a combine then with his own complete perfections in himself was all his state more solemn than the tedious pomp that waits on princes when they reach the new long on horses lay and grooms besmeared with gold dazzles the crowd and sets them all gaps near in his presence adam though not ever yet with submiss approach and reverence meek as to a superior nature bowing low thus said native of heaven for other place none can then have in such glorious shape contain since by descending from the thrones of evo those happy places the last design a while to want and honor these was it with us to only who yet by sovereign gift pos- possess this spacious ground in yonder city bower to rest and what the garden choices be us to sit and taste till this meridian heat be over and the sun more cool decline whom thus the angelic virtue answered mine adam i therefore came now art thou such created or such place hast here to dwell as many not of invite do spirits of heaven to visit thee laid on them where thy bower overset for this mild hours mild hours till evening rise i have at will so to the sylvian lords the came that like pomona's arbor smiled with flowers its decades and fragrance smells but if undecked save with herself more lovely fair than would nymph or fairest goddess faint of three that in mounted a naked stool stood to entertain her guest from heaven no evil she needed what she proof no thought in form altered her ne- altered her cheek on whom the angel hail bestowed the holy solution used long after to blessed mary second e hail mother of mankind whose fruitful womb shall fill the world more numerous with thy sons then with these various fruits the trees of god have heaped this table raised of grace it of the table was and mossy seats had round and on her ample square from side to side all autumn pile those spring and autumn here danced hand in hand a while discoursed the whole no fear lest dinner cool when this begun our earth heavenly stranger pleased to taste the bounties which our nourisher from whom all perfect good unmeasured art descends to us for food and for delight hath caused the earth to yield unsavory food perhaps to spiritual nature only this i know that one celestial father gives to all to who the angel therefore what he gives whose praise be over some to men in part spiritual may of pure spirit be found no ingrateful food and food alike those pure intelligential substances require as doth you rational and both contain within them every law faculty of sense whereby they hear smell see touch taste tasting conquer digest assimilate and corporeal to incorporeal turn for no whatever was created needs to be sustained and fed of elements the gross 
grosser feeds the purer, the earth, the sea, earth and the sea feeds air, the air, those fires ethereal, and as lowest first the moon, whenever, when in her wishes round those spots unpugged, vapors not yet into her substance turn. Nor doth the moon no nourishment exhale from her moist continent to higher orbs. The sun that light imparts to all receives from all his elemental recompense in humid exaltations and at even stops with the ocean. Though in heaven the trees of life embrace fruitage beer and vines yield nectar. Though from off the boughs each morn we brush mellifluous dews and find the ground covered with pearly grain. Yet God hath here varied his bounty so with new delight, as may compare with heaven, and to taste, think not I shall be nice. So down they sat, and to their wines fell, nor seemingly the angel, nor in mist, the common gloss of theologians, but with keen dispatch of real hunger, and concoctive heat to transubstantiate what, what redounds transpires through spirits with ease, no wonder if by fire of shooty coal the empiric alchemist can turn or holds it's possible to turn metals of drossiest ore to perfect gold. As from the mine, meanwhile at devil eve ministered naked and their flowing cups with pleasant liquors crowned. O oh, innocent deserving paradise, if ever then, then had the sons of God excuse to have been enamored at that sight. But in those hearts, love unlibidinous reigned, nor jealousy was understood. The injured lovers hell, thus when with meats and drinks they had sufficed, not burdened nature, sudden mind arose in Adam, not to let the occasion pass, given him by this great conference to know of things above his world and of their being who dwell in heaven, whose excellence he saw transcend his own so far, whose radiant forms divine effulgence, whose high power so far exceeded human and his very speech, thus to the imperial minister he framed. Inhabitant with God, now know I well thy favor in this honor done to man, under whose lovely roof thou hast vouchsafed to enter, and these earthy fruits to taste. Food not of angels yet accepted so, as that more willingly thou couldst not seem. At heaven's high feasts or have fed, yet what compare? To whom the winged hierarch replied, O Adam, one almighty is, from whom all things proceed, and up to him return. If not depraved from good, created all such to perfection. One first matter all, induced with various forms, various degrees of substance, and in things that live of life, but more refined, more spiritous and pure. As near to him placed or nearer tending, each in their several active spheres assigned, till body up to spirit work in bounds proportion to each kind. So from the root springs lighter the green stalk, from thence the leaves more airy last the bright consummate flower. Spirits odorous breathes, flowers and their fruits man's nourishment by gradual scale sublime to vital spirits aspire, to animal, to intellectual, give both life and sense, fancy and understanding, whence the soul reason receives and reason is her being discursive or intuitive, discourse is of test yours, the latter most is ours, differing but in degree of kind the same. For you, but to properly with the Wonder not then what God what for you speak. saw oh, him. If I refuse not, but convert as you to 
proper substance time may come when men with angels may participate and find no inconvenient diet nor too light fare and from these corporal nutriments perhaps your bodies may at last turn to all to spirit improved by tract of time and winged ascent ethereal as we or may at choice here or in heavenly paradises dwell if ye be found obedient and retain unalterably firm his love entire whose progeny you are meanwhile enjoy your fill what happiness this happy state can comprehend incapable of more to whom the patriarch of mankind replied o favor favorable spirit propitious guest well hast thou taught the way that might direct our knowledge and the scale of nature set from center to circumference whereon in contemplation of created things by steps we may ascend to god but say what mean that caution join if ye be found obedient can we want obedience then to him or possibly his love desert who formed us from the dust and placed us here full to the utmost measure of what bliss human desires can seek or apprehend to whom the angel son of heaven and earth attend that thou art happy o to god that thou continuest such o to thyself that is to thy obedience there in stand this was that caution given thee be advised god made thee perfect not immutable and good he made thee but to preserve he left it in thy power ordained thy will by nature free not overruled by fate in extri in extricable or strict necessity our voluntary service he requires not our necessitated such with him finds no acceptance nor can find for how can hearts not free be tried whether they serve willing or no who will but what they must be by destiny and can no other choose myself and all the angelic host that stand in sight of god enthroned our happy state hold as you yours while our obedience holds on other surety none freely we serve because we freely love as in our will to love or not in this we stand or fall and some are fallen to obedience fallen and so from heaven to deepest hell o fall from what high state of bliss into what woe to whom our great progenitor thy words attentive and with more delighted ear divine instructor i have heard than when cherubic songs by night from neighboring hills aerial music sent nor knew i not to be both will and deed created free yet that we never shall forget to love our maker and obey him whose command single is yet so just my constant thoughts assured me and still assure though that thou tellest hath passed in heaven some doubt within me move but more this desire to hear if thou consent the full relation which must needs be strange worthy of sacred silence to be heard and we have yet large day for scarce the sun hath finished hath his journey half his journey and scarce begins his other half in the great zone of hell thus adam made request and raffle after short pause assenting thus began his matter thou enjoinest me o prime of men sad task and hard for how shall i relate to human sense the visible exploits of wearing spirits how without remorse the ruin of so many glorious ones and perfect while they stood how last unfold the secrets of another world perhaps not lawful or revealed yet for thy good this is dispensed and what surmounts the reach of human sense i shall delineate so by likening spiritual corporeal corporeal forms as may express them best though what if earth be 
but the shadow of heaven and things therein each to other like more than on earth is thought as yet this world was not and chaos wild reigned where these heavens now roll where earth now rests upon her center poised when on a day for time thou in eternity applied to motion measures all things durable by present past and future on such day as heaven's great year brings forth thy imperial host of angels by imperial summons called innumerable before thy almighty throne forthwith from all the ends of heaven appeared under their highest in orders bright ten thousand thousand in science high advanced standards and gone phalons twinst van and rear stream in the air and for distinction serve of hierarchies of orders and degrees or in their glittering tissues bear emblazed holy memorials acts of zeal and love recorded eminent thus when in orbs of circuit inexpressible they stood orbed within orb the father infinite by whom in bliss embosomed sat the sun a mist as from a flaming mount whose top brightness had made invisible thus speak hear all ye angels progeny of light thrones dominations princedoms virtues powers hear my decree which unrevoked shall stand this day i have begot whom i declare my only son and on this holy hill him have anointed whom ye now behold at my right hand your head i him appoint but and by myself have sworn to him shall bow all knees in heaven and shall confess him lord under his great wise children reign abide united as one individual soul for ever happy him who disobeys me disobeys breaks union and that day cast out from god and blessed vision falls into utter darkness deep engulfed his place ordained without redemption without end so spake the omnipotent and with his words all seemed well pleased all seemed but were not all that day as other solemn days they spent in song and dance about the sacred hill mystical dance which yonder starry sphere of planets and of fixed in all her wheels resembles nearest mazes intricate eccentric intervolved yet regular than most when most irregular they seem and in their motions harmony divine so smooths her charming tones that god's own ear listens delighted evening now approached for we have also our evening and our morn we are ours for change delectable not need forthwith from dance to sweet repast they turn desires all in circles as they stood tables are set and on a sudden piled with angels with angel that. food and rubbed nectar flows in pure in diamond and massy gold fruit of delicious wines the growth of heaven on flowers reposed and with fresh flowerets crowned they eat they drink and in communion sweet quaff immortality and joy secure of surfeit where full measure only bounds excess before the all bounteous king who showered with copious hand rejoicing in their joy now when ambrosial night with clouds exhaled from that high mount of god whence light and shade spring both the face of brightest heaven had changed to grateful twilight for night comes not there in darker veil and roseate dews disposed all but the unsleeping eyes of god to rest wide over all the plain and wider far than all this globus earth in plain outspread such are the courts of god the angelic throng dispersed in bands and files their camp extend by leaving streams among the trees of life pavilions numberless and sudden reared celestial tabernacles where they slept fanned with cool winds save those who in their course melodious hymns about the sovereign throne alternate all night long but not so waked saturn so call him now his former name is heard no more in heaven he of the first 
if not the first archangel great in power in favor and preeminence yet fraught with envy against the son of god that day honored by his great father and proclaimed messiah king anointed could not bear through pride at that sight and thought himself impaired deep malice thence conceiving and disdain soon as midnight brought on the dusky hour friendliest to sleep and silence he resolved with all his legions to dislodge and leave unworshipped unobeyed the throne supreme contemptuous and his next subordinate awakening thus to him in secret spake sleepest thou companion dear what sleep can close thy eyelids and rememberest what decree of yesterday so late hath passed the lips of heaven's almighty thou to me thy thoughts was wont i mind to thee was wont to impart both waking we were one how then can one thy sleep descend new laws thou seest imposed new laws from him who reigns new minds may raise in us who serve new councils to debate what doubtful may ensue more in this place to utter is not safe assemble thou of all those myriads which we lead the chief tell them that by command ere yet dim night her shadowy cloud withdraws i am to haste and all who under me their banners wave home yard with flying march where we pauses the quarters of the north there to prepare fit entertainment to receive our king the great masia and his new commands who speedily through all the hierarchies intends to pass triumphant and give laws so spake the false archangel and infused bad influence into the unwary breast of his associate he together calls or several one by one the region pars under him regent tells as he was taught that the most high commanding now ere night now ere dim night has disencumbered heaven the great hierarchical standard was to move tells the suggestive cause and cast between ambiguous words and jealousies to sound to sound or trained integrity but all obeyed the wanted signal and superior voice of their great potentate for great indeed his name and his high was his degree in heaven his countenance as the morning star that guides the starry flock allowed them and with lies drew after him the third part of heaven's host meanwhile the eternal eye whose sight discerns abstruest ab thoughts from forth his holy mount and from within the golden lamps that burns nightly before him saw without their light rebellion rising saw in whom how spread among the sons of morn what multitudes were bended to oppose his high decree and is smiling to his only son the said son thou in whom my glory i behold in full resemblance resemblance higher of all my might nearly it now concern us to be sure of our omnipotence and with what arms we mean we mean to hold what anciently we claim of deity or or empire such a foe is rising who intends to erect his throne equals of our throw out the specious knot nor so content hath in his thought to cry in battle what our power is or our night or our right let us advise and to this hazard draw with speed what force is left and all employ in our defense lest unawares we lost this our high place our sanctuary our hill to whom the sun with calm aspect and clear lightning divine in a fable serene made answer mighty father thou thy force justly hast in derision and secured lofest at their vain design and tumlets vain matter to me of glory whom their hate illustrates when they see all regal power given me to quell their pride and in event no no whether i be dexterous to subdue thy rebels 
or to be found the worst in heaven. So spake the sun, but Saturn, with his power far was advanced on winged speed, and host innumerable as the stars of night, of stars of morning, drew drops with the sun impels, impels on every leaf and every flower. Regions they passed, the mighty regencies, or seraphim and potentates and throne, in their triple degrees, regions to which all thy dominion, Adam, is no more than what this garden is to all the earth and all the sea, from one entire globus is stretched into longitude, which having passed at length into the limits of the north, they came and sat unto his royal seat high on a hill, far blazing as a mount raised on a mount, with pyramids and towers, far diamond quarries, from diamond quarries hewn and rocks of gold, the palace of great Lucifer, so called that structure in the dialect of men interpreted, which not long, which not long after he affecting all quality, equality with God, in imitation of that mount whereon Messiah was, was declared in high of heaven, the mountain of the congregation called for Peter this assembled all his train, pretending so commanded, so to consult about the great reception of their king, Tither to come and with calumnious art. Of counterfeited truth thus hail their ears. Thrones, dominations, wisdoms, virtues, powers. If these magnificent titles atri men, not merely titular, since by decree, another now had to himself engrossed all power and us eclipse under the name of king anointed, for whom all this haste of midnight march and hurried meeting here, this only to consult how we may best with what may be devised of honors new. Receive him coming to receive from us, need tribute it unpaid. Prostration while too much to one, but double how endured to one and to his image now proclaimed. But what if better counsels might erect our minds and teach us to cast off this yoke? Will a submit your necks? and choose to bend the supple knee, ye will not. If I trust to know a right, or if ye know yourselves, natives and sons of heaven possessed before by none, and if not equal all, yet free, equally free for orders and degrees, jar not with liberty, but well consist, who can in reason then all right assume monarchy over such as live by right? His equals, if in power and splendor less, in freedom equal, or can introduce law and edict on us? Who without law are not? Much less for this to be our Lord and look for adoration to the abuse of those imperial titles which assert our being ordained to govern, not to serve. Thus, for his bold discourse without control had audience, vain among the seraphim abdial, than whom none with more zeal adored, the deity and divine commands obeyed, stood up and in a flame of zeal severe, the current of his fury thus opposed. O oh, argument, blasphemous, false, and proud, words which no ear ever to hear in heaven, expected list of all from thee, in great in place thyself so high above thy peers, cast though with impious obliquy condemn the just decree of God pronounced and sworn that to his only son by right endured with regal sceptre 
every soul in heaven shall bend the knee and in that honor do you confess him rightful king unjust though sayest flatly unjust to bind with laws the free and equal over equals to let reign one over all with unsuccessed power shall do give law to god shall do dispute with him the points of liberty who made the for to art and form the powers of heaven such as he pleased and circumscribed their being it by experience taught we know how good and of our good and of our dignity how provident he is how far from thought to make us less bent they rather to exalt our happy state under one head more near united but to grant it the unjust that equal or equals monarch reign thyself to great and glorious dose to count or all angelic nature join in one equal to him begotten son by whom as by his word the mighty father made all things even thee and all the spirits of heaven by him created in their bright degrees crowned them with glory and to their glory name thrones dominations princedoms virtues powers essential powers nor by his reign obscure but more illustrious may since he the head one of our number thus reduced becomes his law our law all honor to him done results our own seek then this impious race and tempt not these but hasten to appease the incensed father and the incensed son while pardon may be found in time besought so spake the fervent angel but his zeal none seconded age out of season just or singular and rash where it rejoiced the apostate and more haughty thus reply that we were formed then says thou and the work of secondary hand by task transferred from father to his son strength point and new doctrine which we would know whence learn who saw when this creation was rememberest thou thy making while the maker gave thee being we know not when we were not as now no none before us self begot self raised by our own quickening power when fatal cords had circled his full orb the birth mature of this our native heaven ethereal sons our puissance is our own our own right hand shall teach us higher deeds by proof to try who is our equal then thou shall behold whether by supplication we intend address or to begot the almighty throne beseeching or beseeching this report these tidings carry to the anointed king and fly ere he will intercept thy flight he said and as the sound of water be hoarse murmur echoes to his words applause through the infinite host nor less for that the flaming share of fearless though alone encompassed round with hope thus answered bold o alienate from god o spirit accursed forsaken of all good i see thy fall determined and thy hapless few involved in this perfidious fraud contagion spread both of thy crime and punishment henceforth no more be troubled how to quit the yoke of god's messiah those indulgent laws will not be now vouchsafed other decrees against thee are gone forth without recall that golden chapter which thou didst reject is now an iron rod to bruise and break thy disobedience well thou didst advise yet not for thy advice or threats i fly these wicked tents devoted lest the wrath impendent raging into sudden flame distinguish now for soon expect to feel his thunder on thy head devouring fire then who created thee lamenting lord when who can uncreate thee tell thou no so speak the stair of abdil faithful found among the faithless faithful only he among innumerable faults unmoved unshaken unseduced unterrified his loyalty he kept his love his zeal no number no example with him wrought to stop from truth 
or change each constant mind to single. From amidst them both he passed, long way to hostel spot, which he sustained superior, nor of violence feared part, and with retorted scorn hit back it down on those proud towers to swift destruction do. That's the end of book five. Thank you, readers. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Once again, Death Reading Club wishes you all a very, very happy new year ahead. So, meet you in 2022. Now, thank you for staying with us once again. And if any one of you wishes to join, do leave us a message or you may also join Death Reading Club on Telegram. Hope to see, hope to see you there. Bye-bye.